Hi everybody, guys. My name is Rosie, and until I was 12, they called me Russell. I was a completely ordinary boy, and then, all of a sudden, everything changed in my favor. Or not. Until I was 12, I was just a normal kid. Yeah, I was born a boy. Completely normal, healthy, and reasonable. Flexible enough not to cause my parents any troubles. I played football, loved my treehouse, and I had a lot of friends from my neighborhood. But this friendship made my mom extremely nervous. My parents are creative and well-educated people. My mom was an honorary museum employee. She liked her job. But except for the good social status and the opportunity to personally see all sorts of old things, this position didn't give her anything, including a decent salary. Mostly, our family budget was based on dad's income, but he was also an extremely creative and controversial person. He wrote detective novels. Sometimes, we were just swimming in money. We bought a luxury house with a pool, filled the closets with clothes, parents changed cars for new and prestigious ones, and sometimes people just didn't buy dad's books, and we didn't even have enough money for food. But, as every kid, I didn't bother much with such things. I just lived for my own pleasure, performed the bare minimum of my duties so that my parents didn't panic too much. I did my homework, regularly went to school, and always tried my best. And anyway, our life was no different from the lives of our neighbors, for example. Everything in our environment was the same. Income, houses, cars, and even the number of kids. Even the lawns of the entire area were the same. The standard rose bushes, a one meter hedge, smooth trimmed grass matching the lines. If you live in the same areas, like this video and write in the comments your craziest ideas about having fun. Let's share our experience. So there was a boring standard suburban life there. Mom said it was the perfect environment to raise kids and then peacefully get old. She also told me when I was a kid, she and my dad lived in downtown in a creepy apartment with a view of the factory from the windows. And of course, there was a dangerous criminal presence there. Teenagers were wandering around wearing piercings, tattoos, partaking illegal substances. When I was 12, I hated hearing these stories. My mom probably thought there was a lot of instructive things about them, like what you shouldn't do. But actually, I was just so bored. And it seemed to me, somewhere where the noble suburbs ended, begins real life. I even dreamed when I grew up, I would definitely move to downtown to have fun every day. And then, something happened. All of a sudden, my penis got inflamed, and it began to cause me considerable inconvenience. Of course, I had everything until the last moment. But at some point, even going to the toilet became a real torture for me. So, my mom, noticing my painful sufferings, urgently dragged me to the doctor. And there was something any boy should never hear. It turned out my development was slightly delayed and my foreskin from the means of natural protection became a real problem. Something was growing under it. I didn't understand it. And for my health, it needed to be cut off as soon as possible. So the cut was the only way out for me. Now, I recommend all the guys to skip the video away because what I will tell you next can hurt you mentally. For some reason, I wasn't afraid. Well, we have a lot of Jewish boys at school, and that's fine. And I have long been instructed about the procedure itself. Don't get me wrong, not that I was ever interested in other people's bodies. We just have a locker room for all at school, and the guys were in the habit of always measuring themselves. So that's why I knew everything about this procedure. And on the appointed day, I didn't even worry much. In theory, the procedure itself was nothing terrible or dangerous. In many countries, they don't even give a painkiller. This process is somewhat like a manicure or a barber shop. Only then, you go two weeks with stitches in a, um, your special place. And here I am, lying on the surgical table, under a cheerful pain-killing injection. And suddenly, I could tell from the surgeon's face, something went wrong. But I was afraid to even guess how much. As any normal person and a guy, I was terribly scared. As it turned out, my fears were not in vain. Because after I got transferred to the room, it turned out a terrible thing happened. Well, the surgeon, for some reason, 
messed up, and instead of removing my foreskin, he cut off my, uh, my penis almost entirely. Of course, my parents immediately filed a complaint in court against the clinic, and specifically the doctor, but there's no way it could have given me back what was cut off, and sewing it back on wasn't an option either. I don't remember why, and what to do next was also unclear to me. I was lying in the no penis position for about three weeks, and all this time my only thoughts were pictures of how I was being cut out of this world, because I just didn't understand how, and most importantly, why I should continue my life. Now I'm writing about it calmly, but at the time, I would never wish on anyone what I experienced in that hospital room. I had depression, nightmares, and I just didn't want to move. I even pissed in my bed, not because I couldn't get up or something. I just didn't really care what was going on with my body. Life was over for me. Then, there was only the nightmare of an endless and joyless existence. One day, my parents got a strange offer. Supposedly, there was no option to fix anything, since it was unlikely my penis would grow back. Or exactly, it was unlikely the resulting penis would function properly. My parents were asked to return home with their daughter instead of a son. They didn't tell me about it for some reason. Then there was work with a psychologist. And since at that time, I had already reached the point of no return, I agreed. Again, I didn't care if they even thought to make me into, say, a manatee or an alien. So after a series of operations, I became a girl. A few more years of hormone therapy and working with a therapist, and I'm almost fine. I still have nightmares, but objectively, I understand what happened to me isn't the worst thing that could have happened. Dying from infection, for example, is much worse. In fact, it took me a long time to get used to that I no longer have the right to belong to the male sex. Some things that are natural for a boy, like to piss standing, I had to literally force myself to do it the way girls usually do. Here, I thank my mom. She guided me and supported me in my new shape. We had to move to another city to avoid hurting me even more. In my new place, I immediately started to introduce myself as a girl, and no one knew my story, so it was even easier for me. And the fact that sometimes I forgot myself and started talking about myself in a masculine way was perceived as a normal teenage joke. But the worst thing wasn't even that, but the hormone therapy. It was really disgusting. When you throw up further than you can see, your breasts grow, your body proportions change, and so on. Nightmare. I don't know how real girls feel about it. And the bra is also Satan's invention. I would even use bra instead of a torture. Now, I'm 17, and I'm... kinda used to it? Yeah, probably used to it. Only my old family photos remind me that I was once a boy, with a complicated character. I specifically forbid my parents to throw my old photos away, and keep them as a reminder of what happened to me. Over time, cosmetics came into my life. Typical women's clothing like skirts and dresses. Bras that I hated. But bras and heels are also parts of the ladies' style. So, nowhere to run. Of course, you can judge me or say it's all wrong, but... But what are my options here? Here, I either accept the rules of the game, or go mad, and spend the rest of my days in a white-walled chamber in some mental hospital. It's easier for me to accept, and even learn to take advantage of my position. It just so happened that not a particularly remarkable boy turned out to be quite an attractive girl. I don't know if it's a joke about hormones or just genetics, but I'm pretty enough to get noticed by boys. And the other day, I signed a contract with a photographer. He takes me for a catalog photo shoot of women's clothing. No underwear, just different casual outfits. The only thing that bothers me in my current situation is guys. They're bothering me, trying to get to know me, and all that. But even the nicest guys don't make me feel anything at all. I'm kinda... straight. Yeah, and hormones don't help me at all. But I have learned from my own experience. There is quite a way out even from this vicious cycle. The LGBT community turned out to be a very nice and affectionate place, which willingly accepted a new member, me. The funny thing is that my story about how the doctor deprived me of my genitals didn't cause any resentment or anything like that. No, 
Everyone sympathized with me and didn't focus on it anymore. They pay a lot of money for this sort of thing here. My parents don't mind my partner being a girl at all. They know for sure it is perfectly normal in my case, and they protect me every possible way if someone tries to look at our nice couple sideways. My girlfriend says she has never met such cool, understanding parents who accepted her and our sexual identity better than her own parents. By the way, her parents kicked her out of the house, so yeah, mine are super parents. Or maybe they knew that they will have a daughter-in-law someday, since I was born a boy before. Now, you'll never understand that I am in front of you, and I'm not an original girl. Now, in fact, even the Adam's apple, or some angularity of figure, won't help you to understand. All these things can be removed by doctors, or were removed by hormones, as in my case. So, I hasten to disappoint all the guys in the world, even if you think you're a connoisseur of the female body. It only seems that way to you, but that's not true. So just love each other, because the main thing is how you feel in a relationship with someone. And don't rush to condemn the LGBT community, because each of us has our own stories behind us that deserve, if not understanding, then at least respect. Write in the comments everything you think about my story. Share it with your friends, just to know that anything can happen in life. And remember that appearance doesn't define a person, but their character and actions can tell you a lot about their personality.